<laughs> it's it's not a big deal. I don't have class on Fridays. I was watching film upstairs anyways. I, I completely forgot all about this, to be honest with you, until you messaged me and I was like, oh, sh well, I was upstairs anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. Richard Sherman talked about, you know, how student athletes don't have any free time. And he kind of blew up on a reporter, this was last year, I believe, about how he was a Stanford grad and he, how he was a communication barrier. He's very proud of that, but at the same time, he did not have a college experience. And that's what you see with a lot of guys in the NFL who have put so much time into football and training, trying to get to the NFL and trying to get to that next level, that they, they weren't a kid. They were not able to be a kid in college. So I've gotten to hang out with my friends. I've gotten to meet some amazing people. But have I got to be a kid a whole lot? No, I haven't. You're representing something bigger because you're representing a university, especially if you're someone who is playing a lot, who is getting a lot of media pub and, so, and stuff like that. So it's not really too hard for me to be, hum, be humble because you know, at the end of the day, I've gone six and five as a quarterback the last two seasons which is pathetic in my, in my view, okay? And yes, I've broken records, I've done all these things, congrats, you know? But all I really do care about is what happens in the win total. Because when you walk in that locker room after a loss, it sucks. You failed, you put in all this preparation. Yeah, you watched 25 hours of film this week. Sweet, cool, congrats. You lost. You put in all this time. It's like you put in all this time for a project and you got an F. And I hate to coach, quote Coach Keys on this one, but you win or you lose. There is no gray area. You know, there is no gray area where, hey, this is a moral victory. No, we're not, you're not out here playing for moral, you're not out here playing for moral victories. Practice basically, it's not as much as a get hyped up situation. You know, there are certain practices where you've come back, like the spring ball practice, the first spring ball practice of the year, everyone's going to be hyped up because we haven't done it in a while. Or the first fall camp practice, everybody's going to be real excited. There's going to be a lot of emotion in the air. Ran 10, touch. But at the same time, I'm a very quiet guy at practice. I'm a very reserved guy at practice just because I know I need to focus and I find myself talking to myself out on the field, basically seeing my reads, seeing the backside safety, okay, he rolled down, where do we need to go with the ball now? And basically having a solution to go on every single play, and uh, it's just a lot of focus. Phenomenal, over and above, uh, tries to do everything right, and then everything he doesn't get right, he wants to learn why, and the hows, and the reasons why he's not getting it right, and then he spends hours upon hours trying to make sure it doesn't happen again, way above the standard, because his preparation, he knows is key to his success. Uh, most student athletes should know that. It would have to go over and above, but a lot of student athletes put in the required time and a little extra, he puts in tons extra. Okay, good route, bud. Looks like you got better at something today. Um, when you talk about an athlete in college, you talk a lot about time management and uh, you know, we've said it a ton during player panel when, you know, the recruits come in and stuff. 
um, you know, it takes a lot. It's a lot different from high school as to where, you know, you can go home, you have a lot more free time, you can go hang out with your friends and stuff. On You're on a set schedule when it comes to being a college athlete. You have to go to class and then you're going straight to either, for us, football meetings, taping, and then you're going straight out to practice. How good a player wants to be and how far he wants to take his team is the level of commitment they have to make outside of those 20 hours. You know, and that's why Reese is different because he's over and above. He is up there with probably six other players that I've been around in the nearly 20 years, some years of coaching that put in that much time to master the craft. Hey, in college, shoot, there's days you don't have class. You know, what are you gonna do with the rest of those hours? You know, you better get up, you better get your lift in, you better study some film, you gotta do all those things. Coming with my position, especially, I mean, okay, let's talk about a little bit about the season. I mean. You look at it, Mondays we have our day off, watch about eight hours of film on Mondays. Then you go to Tuesday and then we're sti I'm still watching a ton of film, okay, and then plus I have class as well along with all of this. So watching about 25 hours of film per week, you know, you talk about most credit hours, you know, you have to go to a class for, you know, th two, three times a week sometimes. You know, I have to sit there and watch film, 25 hours of film so that I can be successful on Saturdays and sometimes that doesn't even happen. You know, what a lot of kids find fun, you know, it is, hey, let's go out to the bar, let's do something like that, you know, let's go, you know, let's go get wasted, whatever. And uh, at the same time, all right, well, I practice at 9 a.m. the next day. I'm probably not gonna do something like that. I mean, it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. I mean, you signed on for this. It's something that you have committed yourself to. You, you put pen to paper in order to play college football.